it's a pretty fresh. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty fresh cheese, and it's also a little bit less salty than something that's like more aged. Um, Cotija, I think, is also pretty fresh, but seems to be harder and like a little bit more aged and a little bit saltier. Um, I've used Cotija for this recipe. I've also used something like uh, Fresco. Queso Fresco is more like crumbly than something like queso Oaxaca. Oaxaca is like, it's like a string cheese almost. And it like really, really melts down. That'd be good if you wanted to like stuff it into like, I don't know, like a chili rellenos, like stuffed chilies. Um, but for this, like for this filling, I wanted to do something like crumbly or not. It's not about me. It's just, I think more traditionally it's using like a crumbly, a crumbly cheese. Um, it's not like supposed to melt down completely inside. Like when we think of enchiladas, a lot of times we're like, oh, like a bunch of rolled up, like sort of like almost like taquitos, like little tacos inside of a tray, like with like a Mexican cheese blend, which is like a mixture of like cheddar, jack and mozzarella. Like, no, that's not Mexican cheese, but whatever. Um, this is different. This is like a different type of enchilada entirely. That's actually dipped and fried instead of like rolling up all those, like you would put like that melty cheese into like one of those, like, I don't know, Mexican American, maybe you could call it um, like enchiladas in a tray, you know, in like a Pyrex where you pour like canned enchilada sauce all over it. And then you top it with cheese and which is still like really good. Like, don't get me wrong, not, not casting any judgment here whatsoever, but this is like a, a little bit more of a traditional style um, from Michoacan. Ben, would you talk about the chilies a little bit? The yeah. guajillos? Yes, yes. I have a lot to say. So let me bring out my chili bag to illustrate this point. Um, basically, like, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different types of chili peppers in the world, all originating from North America at some point. Um, something interesting to note. But basically, um, here, let me get you kind of like a, let me get you a view of all these chilies. Okay, so, oh, nice. These smell so good. So I would say the main differences between chilies are kind of their spice level and their, um, obviously their flavor, but like some chilies are like naturally sweeter, a little bit more fruity than others. Um, other chilies are like very, very rich in flavor and not fruity at all. Um, some chilies are smoky because they're just smoked. So this is a Morita chili. Um, moritas are a little bit fruitier. You can tell that they're kind of smaller and they're pretty dark um, compared to a guajillo, which is what I recommended you get for this recipe. Guajillos are like, they have a nice peppery taste, but they're not super sweet. And they also have a thinner skin. Um, these right here are chipotle peppers. They might look like magic mushrooms, but they're actually just chipotle peppers. And chipotles are um, dry. Well, they're just smoked jalapenos. So this is a smoked jalapeno. That's a chipotle pepper. Um, and then there are these arbols, which are like much spicier. These like little tiny ones. These tiny guys are pretty spicy, the arbol peppers. Um, and then there's like California, there's um, ancho. There's a bunch of other ones that all have their own sort of properties. And so it's kind of, you know, it's like you can like just like learn what each chili does sort of like what it would do for you. Like, and I like to use like blends of chilies oftentimes because it can like just, I don't know, you can create the flavor you want basically, um, the flavor profile with the amount of smokiness, fruitiness, whatever you want. And the more complex ones are like blends of, you know, a fruity one, a like super rich, deep one, um, something that's like kind of middle of the line, something that's a little bit spicier. Yeah. So if you ever go to your Mexican market, local market, and you're like, what do I get? Guajillo, California, those are all like pretty standard, like flavorful, mild, not super sweet, not smoky, just kind of standard. Um, you can get ancho or morita for like that more like fruity taste, I guess. And then like our bowl are definitely, or like heaven facing, like there's a bunch of like spicier ones. Those are generally smaller. Um, yeah, cool. So it looks like we have most people here. Um, so we can start, we can kind of get us started. So the general idea here is we're going to be dipping corn tortillas into a chili sauce that we make. 
um, from scratch. And then we're gonna be shallow frying those, stuffing them with a little bit of raw onion and crumbled cheese. And then um, topping it with some fresh shaved lettuce and salsa. So we're making the salsa, um, we're making the chile, and then we're making the actual like ensemble of everything. So I'm gonna move to this view here. Um, so we have all these chilies. Um, I'm using a lot, I'm using like 15 almost because I have kind of a large crowd. I have like four people coming through, but um, five or 10 will probably work. You're gonna have leftovers. But the main thing we're doing is we're creating like a kind of thick, kind of runny, like it's gonna be viscous, but it's gonna be this, this chili that's got a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion flavor and a little bit of oregano. So what we wanna do first is we want to um, de-seed all of our peppers. So you can use scissors actually, that's like a really smart idea, but I'm like stubborn and not smart. So I'll just rip, rip off the top. Like you can just rip off the top of the chili and you wanna kind of remove the seeds. And I do that by like doing this kind of like rubbing I think about like taking two pieces of paper and rubbing it against itself. Um, I'm doing that. And also right now I would recommend, um, actually I would recommend getting, getting a couple of pots of water boiling, like two small pots of water boiling. Um, just get that going. Also, you know, wash your hands, always a good thing to do. It doesn't really matter how much water you have boiling, you just need to make sure that you can easily submerge like more than submerge all of your dried chilies because those are going to reconstitute and absorb the water cool so i have water boiling i'm going to just keep keep working through these chilies removing the seeds you can keep the seeds but they're a little bit bitter by the way they're a little bit bitter and sometimes they're definitely a lot spicy so just keep that in mind i don't think they help the flavor here but um there are like chili powders you can make where you include the seeds.
you don't have to like be perfect about the seating. You don't have to like get every seat out. It's not the end of the world if there's a seat. So I deseeded all of mine. Now I'm just gonna throw it into some not yet boiling water. So I'm gonna wait on that. Um, yeah, what we can do now is prepare just like a little bit under half an onion, or if you have less than I do, you should probably put less in, maybe like a quarter of an onion. Um, just clean your onion. Then I'm also gonna, sorry. Um, I'd also do like a clove of garlic for every five chilies you're, you're throwing in there. So I'm gonna do like three cloves of garlic. And also you can clean a little bit more garlic because um, we're gonna we're gonna be using that for the salsa as well. So just have like another clove on hand for the salsa. So to give some backstory on this dish. Um, this is enchiladas in like enchilada literally means like, it, I think there's a, a verb to put in chili. It's like enchilar and um, enchiladas are basically like um, something that was put in chili, like something that was in chili, in ch chili in. Um, so like you can have enchiladas like this. You can also have like pork enchilada, like, like carnitas enchilada. It's like you take carnitas and you throw it and you cook it in chili. Um, just to kind of give some literal context for that. But also, um, this is from Michoacan, and apparently this is the style they do it. There's this lady, um, I don't actually know her real name, but her YouTube channel name is Demi Rancho a tu cocina, which is like from my from my ranch to your kitchen. And she just cooks these like recipes on her farm. Um, and this is one of the ones she put up there and I've made this multiple times and it's so good and so simple. So wanted to share. Hey Ben. What's up? Um, I had a request from Meryl to do, um, to ask you to do a keto dish okay yeah i mean I, i've done a few but I'll, I'll do another one probably 
at some point. Yeah, well, this one, I mean, she could do this one and just use keto. Uh, keto tortillas. tortillas. Yeah. Yeah, totally. No, that's a good, that's a good point. I've been having some requests come in. Um, Meryl has to come to one of them, though, in order to request oh, them. I yeah. suggested that. <laughs> She's not here right now. Cool. <laughs> so um, so now we can kind of start throwing our stuff into the um, into the actual boiling water. So um, I would throw in all of your dried chilies, um, a few cloves of garlic, one per five chilies, basically. And then uh, a little bit of, of your onion. And then also I would take some oregano if you have it and dash that like a, a healthy amount into the chili. Um, Oregano is a pretty common ingredient in um, South Mexican food, at least, and I think Mexican food in general. So now we have that going. Um, for the salsa, super simple. Your other pot should be boiling by this point too. Um, just wash your tomatoes and peppers. You can clean them if you want. You can like really like take out take out the little cores if you want but really we're just going to blend this all up and i don't really care so i'm just going to cut off the stems here um and then i'm just going to throw uh like four or five tomatoes and a couple of serranos into that smaller pot of boiling water um and that's going to be that's going to be our salsa so this is actually a cooked salsa um we're not roasting this salsa we're just boiling, just boiling that peppers and tomatoes. And we're going to blend that up later with a little bit of garlic. Um, which, oh yeah, by the way, you can go ahead and throw the rest of your garlic into that salsa pot. And we're going to actually do some raw onion for that salsa. So. So we're like, we're getting there. I mean, now. Now I would say um, what's important for us to do is prepare the actual filling for the enchilada. So we have, we have that other piece of our onion that we haven't yet used. Um, we want to clean that and dice it. We're going to dice it like pretty fine. So I would re always recommend white onions because from what I understand, I've heard some mixed mixed opinions but from what i understand white onions are less harsh than yellow when you're eating them raw so white onions work pretty well um i guess to dice an onion i usually will like i'll usually make like a few cuts not all the way through but just a few cuts like this way and then if you really wanted to you could you could go this way too and then finally on the the other axis. Um, you can go slow too. Of your diced onion. Cool. And then now um, we have our diced raw onion and we also want to use our cheese now. So 
So I'm going to cut like one fifth of this cheese off because I'm going to reserve that and use it for um, like topping. But the rest of the cheese, I'm going to dice. Um, I'm using Ranchero again, but if you're using Cotija, it crumbles really easily. You can just crumble it with your hands. I'm just cubing this cheese. Now with this cube cheese, you're gonna mix it, you're gonna mix it in with your onions. Mix it in with your raw onions, and that's gonna be the, the stuffing. I'm just mixing the cheese and the onions together now. Make sure they're distributed. So um, the next step, we can just, we're just kind of getting all of our things in order so we can efficiently make this. So now I have this iceberg lettuce. If you have lettuce, if you have cabbage, whatever, it's fine. Um, we're gonna top, we're gonna like shred it up so we can use it as a topping for our enchiladas. Um,
I'm just cutting it in half to keep the strands a little bit shorter, but pretty thin. And kind of loosen it up a bit too. And you know, if you want to be like a pro about it, you can throw your um, lettuce into a bowl of cold water. That will make it like extra crispy um, because it'll actually like rehydrate all of the cells. It'll be even more crispy than when you like when you bought it. Um, so up to you, but also I think that would reduce like oxidization. Um, I just don't think I care right now. So. Okay. Good. Cool. So I have this pile of lettuce here. Um, let's switch the camera view a bit. Oh, I wonder how my battery is doing. Okay, it's pretty low. So just kind of just to see. Um, sorry, my battery's low, so this is plugged in, but um, right there is my chili, and right there is my salsa going, all the tomatoes and peppers. Um, and we're about to bring that over and start working on it, like blending it. Okay, so it looks like um, my chili is kind of done. Like they've been boiling for you know, 15, 20 minutes now. You can kind of see, um, see right here what's going on. They're pretty reconstituted, you know, pretty full. I don't want to spill that, but you get the idea. Um, also, the, the tomatoes and the peppers have split open. So the tomatoes, especially, you can kind of see um, they've split open and these are ready to be blended. So um, get whatever container. Um, if you're using a blender, just like get like a just a blender, you know, if you've got a blend tech or a Vitamix or whatever, um, you want it to be pretty pureed. If you only have like a food processor, that's fine. Um, just it's going to be slightly different in texture, a little bit chunkier, but if you have a blender, that's a good uh, idea to use it. I'm using an immersion blender, like one of these, one of these dudes, um, handheld ones. So that's what I'll be blending with over here. So now what you want is you'll want salt. You want to have some salt on hand. Um, and you'll also want that other piece of the onion. Um, so I have another onion here. I'm going to be using that to, um, to actually slice just a little bit of it into the salsa. I'm just going to cut myself a little chunk.
So what are we doing here? So now I have this. You just want a container that like has wide enough walls where it's not going to splash. Um, for this, for this salsa, I think I'm just going to do it um, in the pot, but I'm going to remove the water first, actually, because I want to add only a little bit of water, only a little bit of water in. So this is just the salsa right now. Um, this is actually not the right thing to do this thing. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna switch it up a bit. I just need something tall and wide. I'm just going to put these in here. Make sure you get all the garlic um, flavor. Put a little bit of water in there, and um, a pretty, pretty solid pinch of salt. Probably even a little bit more. You can salt to taste, so don't like oversalt it. But you're definitely going to want this to be seasoned. Um, And then you want to throw in um, a little bit of onion. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slice up my piece of onion here. All right, so this salsa is done. Um, taste it. Nice. Yeah, so it should be like pretty tomatoey, a little bit spicy, a little bit peppery. Pretty flavorful, but it's not roasted. It's a pretty clean salsa. It's like kind of simple. It's not like super deep in flavor. Cool. So the next thing is the chili from earlier. Um, which You're again going to want to kind of separate some of that liquid. You don't want all that water in there. But as we go, we will add more um, because we want this, this chili to be like thick, but not too thick. Um, 
So also peppers, peppers have something called pectin in them, which anyone who's made jam um, knows or probably is aware of has seen the effects of pectin, but basically it's like a thickener um, and it provides, it will like thicken your chili quite a bit. So um, toss another like big pinch or two into your, into your chili. Start with a pinch, taste it later, um, and just blend up all of your chilies. If you're using only one blender, then you can like, you know, clean out your blender real quick, or you can leave it in there. It doesn't really matter from this also. Wow. And yeah, this is, <laughs> this is like hitting my respiratory system now. <coughs> Is there anyone who has any questions or is kind of like behind or lost or whatever, just let me know. Um. I think part of the issue was just that we got different peppers, um, but so you're rehydrating them. That doesn't make sense if they're not already dehydrated. Is that right? Right, right totally. So. With yours, you can just blend those up and add a little bit of the cooking liquid in until it's like thinned out enough and I can, I'll, I'll get there. But um, you can, you're going to be dipping your tortilla into that then. So um, you, you still probably, you cooked it, right? Did you cook them? Yeah. No? Okay, cool. So if they're cooked, yeah, you can just blend them up and later you'll use like, it'll be a green chili instead of a red chili. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So now you can kind of see this like consistency of this. Um, sorry, let me here. It's definitely like, you know, it's it's definitely like viscous. Like it 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 pours like liquid, but it's kind of thicker, and we want that to stick to the tortilla. So you don't want to use too much water, and I would recommend using like less water and adding water because you can oh there goes my spoon um because you can always like you can always add water you can't really remove water it takes a while to reduce
cool. So, um, I'm going to kind of start on the on the actual cooking situation. So whenever you're ready for that. All right, so as you can see, I have a shallow pan going on heat. Um, I'm gonna put it on like medium heat and put like a hefty amount of oil in there. Maybe like a quarter cup and we'll add oil as we go. Um, the idea here is that we're gonna have kind of like a, we have kind of an assembly line. So. We have our mixture filling cheese and cheese and onion situation over here, kind of off to the side, not, not hot at all. Um, we have our chili right here, and then we have some tortillas on hand. Uh, there's a child crying. Hold on one second. <laughs> no, you can tell. I did not ask if he was okay. I just shut that window as hard as I could. <laughs> anyways, so, um, so anyways, um, so we have some tortillas here, pretty fresh. And we're gonna what we're gonna do is once this comes up to heat, um, we're gonna dip the tortilla in the chili. We're gonna kind of just dip it enough to get one side. It's okay if like a little bit where your fingers are aren't coated. It isn't coated, it's fine. And then we're gonna throw that into the oil. We're gonna fry it. Um, have a spatula on hand for this as well. Um, and also have like a, a serving, what's it called? A plate is what it's called. Have a plate around so you can actually put all of the, oh, sorry. Put all of the finished enchiladas on. Um, have like all of the plates that you're serving on. You can just serve them straight on to the plates. Um, this is... What's up? Oh, hey, Kara, what's up? Sorry, I started talking on loud and I didn't realize I wasn't on mute, hey. <laughs> all good. Awkward. <laughs> Quirky. Quirky. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh. It's good, right? Love the onion. Onion essence. Mm -hmm. Essence of onion. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Starting my own cologne line called Essence of Onion. <laughs> <laughs> for him. <laughs> Garlic for her. <laughs> Allium. <laughs> I like that. All right, so I'm just getting this up to heat. I want this oil pretty hot. No, yeah, you can you can talk. It's fine. Um, yeah, I'm gonna dip it right before I put it in the oil. Exactly. 
Um, I just want to make sure that the oil is hot enough. I don't want to burn. I don't want to burn the sauce. It looks like it's shimmering a bit, so that's probably good. So here's the action shot. So we dip the tortilla like so. We put it in. Woo! I'm gonna do that for like three tortillas. And then spatula, move it around a bit, you know. Flip it over if you can. Oh boy, it's rough. Wow, that's that's rough. Yeah, that's rough. Um, oh, nice. That, that's that's rough. That's rough. That's rough. Um, and then once you flip it over, you stuff it with some cheese, an onion mixture, just a little bit. It goes a long way. Like put a little, little tiny handful in there. And then you fold it up. You can fold it up fully in three, whatever, whatever is easiest, honestly. Um, I'm just going to do it like this because I'm lazy right now. And it's, I've already made this hard for myself. But that's pretty much it. Um, sorry. Kind of drain off that oil. Cool. One. Yeah, you want a bit less oil than I put in. There's a bit too much. So if you put in a quarter cup, that's good. Um, I put in more like half a cup. Yeah, right. No, I mean, it's delicious. Oh, it's just intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've cooked it more oil than this, boys. Now we're cooking with the two I'm going to go in with my second batch now. Yeah. Also, it helps to have the your your tortillas be cold. I think that's because you want the, the chili to kind of stick to it. You want the chili to really stick to your tortilla. You don't want to lose your chili in the oil. You know, maybe I'll, yeah. Yeah, get that content. So the reason why we're, we're frying it on one side, we're flipping it and then we're frying it on the other is because we actually want to cook that. We want to like kind of dehydrate that red chili paste a bit. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty delicious looking. Yeah, you can fold it in three like this. That's kind of a nice, a nice fold technique. Or you can just fold it in two. It's going to taste the same. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask, because this is kind of like a, you need to be paying attention kind of sort of thing. Um, so if anything feels like it's going wrong, let me know. It's going to be OK. Uh, 
that popping up. Tree pose. Why is the Cotija so? Uh, it's not Cotija. It's oh. actually um, Ranchero. Okay. Usually I would use Cotija, but Cotija I found was like really, it was just like really hard. So I wanted to try this. No, it was just hard. Like I just wanted to try this style of cheese. Yeah, that's off the cheese. Exactly. Yeah. Popcorn. You know, usually they'll have this specialized pan for this. That's, I think it's called a comal, and it's basically like an upside down wide brimmed hat. And so the middle will be like a bowl that will allow you to fry things in, in the middle, in the center. And then on the edges, it'll be like, you can kind of rest. You can rest the enchiladas on the sides once they're done um, on the edge. And that's kind of the, the traditional cooking method, or at least modern, the modern traditional cooking method. I don't, I don't know what they were doing a thousand years ago, but that's what we're seeing today. The authentic, I guess, is the word. Can you distribute those like like five to a plate? I'll put five on this one. There's a, there's a nice spatula too. Oh, I think the tongs might rip it up, but I'm curious. I, c I have a mocha head there. Yeah. Oh, wait, did you see like the salsa mocha head there? Yeah. Oh, got it. What else is I have a mocha head. A mulcajete is the actual like grinder. It's like a mortar and pestle. Oh, okay. the salsa mulcajete was just like kind of coarse ground, probably. Okay. No. Kind of rough. These are falling apart. My world is falling apart. How many do you have on each plate over there? One is five and one is four. Okay, cool.
I got one one of those other plates with four. Hey Ben, I'm well having trouble uh, getting the sauce to stick to the tortilla. You have any ideas? Yeah, I was just think I was just thinking about that, and I was kind of suspecting that you'd have a problem with that. Yeah. Um. The thing, the thing about your sauce is because you use raw peppers, there's mm -hmm. a lot more water. There's like a okay. lot, lot more water. When, with with the, the dehydrated ones, I think we had a lot less water because it's dried, mm. obviously, but also there's all that pectin I was talking about, all those thickeners early. So one, one thing you could try to do um, is you could fry the tortilla and then fry the, the sauce and separately put it on top. That'll probably create a similar flavor. It's not going to be like the same in terms of like the composition of the dish, but um, the other thing would be um to try to reduce down your sauce quite a bit but i think that would take like way too much time honestly so um yeah i was suspecting that sorry about that no no but, worries thanks yeah i think i think that would be my solution is like fry the sauce in some oil and like use that after you stuff like a fried tortilla with this the the cheese and mm -hmm. the onions just like cover it in the cooked the cooked chili sauce and that would still be good nice thanks yeah Yo, can I get a plate again? The one with the least amount of enchiladas on it. Sick. Okay, so these are all done here. Can I get one of those plates? Thanks. So now, yeah, you should, yeah. You can bring all the plates over here actually. So now I'm going to give you a quick kind of rundown of how we're topping all of this. Um, so main idea is a nice bunch of lettuce. There's more lettuce, right? Yeah, there is. Cool. Yeah, a bun nice bunch of lettuce um, all over it. Kind of, this is just going to be your crunch factor and kind of a cool contrast to the warm and spicy um, enchilada. Cool. And then once you have your your enchiladas all out and your lettuce all over it. Then you just want to go in with your salsa. And that, that I would say just like, you know, put like liberally, liberally apply it to the, to the cold crunchy lettuce. And that's just a different, different layers of flavor, right? So it's like, if you're doing this with dehydrated guajillos, you have guajillos and then you have serranos in the salsa slightly different peppery taste and then also that like acidity and sweetness from the tomato um and actually i also i don't think this is traditional but i really like crema it's like a thinned out sour cream sort of thing um to give for an analogy i guess and and we're gonna just go in with some crema um we also want the crumbled cheese so this is kind of like the ensemble over here. If you have any extra stuffing, you can reserve that, save it. You can top it with the extra stuffing. Um, I'm just gonna top it. 
our, our stuffing is going to be a little bit on our toppings could be a bit oniony, but it's all good. Um, and I'm going to just mix up some of this crema and put some dollops of the crema on top too, just because we like it. It's kind of like a sour cream, by the way, but I didn't tell you to get this, so sorry. Sorry, you're missing out, I guess. Okay, that is it. So you can kind of see everything going on here. You can see everything going on. You have the enchiladas on the bottom layer, you know, dipped into the chile. You got the, the lettuce on top and then some salsa, some cheese and your optional crema. And honestly, more salsa, why not? Cool. So uh, that is the final sort of dish. That's all of it. Um, Yeah, if you have any questions before it's kind of time to eat for me, um, let me know. Cool. Um, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, if you did make this, please post it on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever, send it to my mom, send it to whoever. But um, I want to see what you made and I want to share it with other people too. Uh, you can tag me at Ben Imadali, Ben underscore Imadali in your um, story. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. This is like really, really good. And I know it's, it's like a lot of steps, but it's actually simple enough um, and it's super, super tasty. Um, you can use that red chili sauce for like anything too. Same with the salsa. Now you have like simple salsa recipe, simple red chili recipe. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy. Um, thanks for coming through. Thank you, Ben. Ben. Fun. Thanks, Ben. You are welcome. You are all welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for gratifying me. <laughs> no. Um, all right. I will see you all later and have a good night. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs>